And I think he's, what's the other thing you're going to do with the tweets? Uh, it will give two away uh, best tweet of the night. So two away to the best tweet of the night, and then the other eight, we're going to do some Q&A. So uh, basically, that means Matt and I are going to get them. Right? <laughs> no board yeah. members are allowed. Oh. Are they? Buy a book. You can afford it. So, uh, anyway. <laughs> oh. You don't know my life. <laughs> Anyway, we're really glad to have him up here, so we're going to try to make sure we finish on time. We've got, we need to be thinking about some questions for him so you guys can get a book. So let's get the show on the road. Well, thanks everybody for uh, inviting me and having me and uh, putting up with me while I'm here. Um, so yeah, I've got uh, some books here to uh, give away and some to sell, so if you want one... It, it's called the best damn web marketing checklist period and the only way I can describe it is that it is the best damn web marketing checklist period. I'm, that's just the way to put it. It's a lot of, a lot of action points, about 675 action points, give or take. Uh, so it's, it's a really good book and it's uh, from anybody from layman on up to expert level. Uh, just a good reference to have and you know, it's like, oh, what is it? What else do I need to do? Uh, well, there it is. It's right there in front of you. So, all right, we're going to talk about how to build an SEO, an SEO campaign that uh, outsmarts, outperforms, and outlasts Google. Uh, real briefly, this is me. Um, we do web presence optimization. Uh, back when I started, we called it SEO, but um, everything's changed in the industry and now it's really more about the web presence in total. And, We'll be talking more about that um, in the presentation. You can follow me on Twitter, Google, LinkedIn, all of those places there. Um, like I said, we'll be monitoring Twitter stream. I got some people back home monitoring Twitter. Um, so if you want to win a book, tweet hashtag best damn book and uh, be pithy, be fun, be engaging, something, say something profound, and uh, we'll be giving away two books. And of course, you can buy some after. And of course, then you can also hire me or my company, and that's who we are, Pole Position Marketing. I've been doing SEO web marketing since 1998, which for those of you who know, that's the year that pretty much Google started. So we've been kind of going neck and neck on the income scale. Now, now they did a little bit better than me, but um, I'm working hard to catch up. I, I am. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this. Um, Let's talk about the challenges of building a web presence. Now, those of you who have been doing this for any length of time, you know, you, you get it that it's not easy to just go out there and create a web presence. You know, we tell people if you're starting with a new site, it takes time to really get rankings. It takes time to get noticed. You can't put a site out there and the next day you're going to have, you know, 1,000 hits and 800 new customers. You've got to really work at it. Uh, Eric Schmidt, back in 2010, Every two days, we create as much information as we did since the dawn of time to 2003. That is a lot of data. And all of that, or most of that's going on the web. So, I mean, really, you imagine the amount of information that's going out there and getting out there. And so that's what we're competing against. You know, we're, we're putting out information ourselves. Somebody else is putting out information. And everybody's just trying to get people's attention. And what we find out is that, you know, that really makes the web a busy place. There's a lot going on on the web. And in any, any given 60 seconds, I don't know if you guys can read some of this, but 600 plus new YouTube videos uploaded every minute. That's a lot of video. It's more than I can watch. As much as I try, that's more than I'm capable of watching. 50, 50 plus WordPress downloads, WordPress itself being downloaded and installed. Um, 168 million emails sent every minute. So, you know, as you can see, and, and you guys can have access to this presentation, you know, to look at this, but you can see there's just a lot of stuff going on. You know, every minute, every 60 seconds, a lot of stuff going on. And of course, you know, people lack focus on the web. Very few of us, when we sit down to do something on the web, do we do it uninterrupted. You know, we're, we're, we're doing multiple things at a time. We're multitasking. You know, we're, we're checking email. We're um, writing a blog post. And we're answering instant messengers. You know, and really, it's, we're very distractible. Everybody's sitting down doing something, but something else that's grabbing our attention. 
you know, and, and everybody in here, how many of you have sent a tweet already? Anybody? All right, so you're being distracted. Somebody reading your tweet has probably just got distracted by your tweet. You distracted them. And of course, so I'm going to distract you again up here. And we're all battling for attention. You know, we're all fighting to get somebody's attention. You're tweeting, you're getting somebody's attention. I'm up here trying to get your attention. You're trying to get somebody else's attention. So this is a battle. Everything going on in the web, it's a battle. And we're all just fighting for the same people. I mean, the amount of people on the planet is finite. We're all fighting for their attention online. And we're all trying to say, hey, come to my site, come to my site. You know, and that's what we want. We want to get eyeballs on the site. It's not like money. They can't keep printing more. Well, I guess we do keep having babies, so scratch that. It is like money. We just keep printing more people. Um, all right, so, you know, Google's just basically looking for the winners. That's what it comes down to. When we look at what do we have to do to build a website that Google loves? What do we have to do to get those top search engine rankings? What's it take? Well, Google's just sitting back going, I want to find out who the winners are. We want to find out who's doing it right. And we, we often look at this, and I've been in the industry long enough that it was all about the algorithms. Everything was about what do we have to do to meet the algorithms? What do we have to do? You know, do we tweak this here, do this here? And, and there's value in that. There's value in doing things for the algorithms. But at the same time, what Google's looking at is who's got the most value? Who's going to win? Those are the people that Google wants to put at the top of the search results for any keywords. They're not looking to make the winners. They're looking just to tell us who they are. Now, we look at it. It's like, oh, we want that top ranking. When I get that top ranking, I won. Well, in reality, you've already won. Google's just saying, this is your prize. You got that top ranking because you've done something worthy of being in that number one position. So what do we have to do? You've got to do more than just build an ordinary website. Ordinary is not going to do anymore. You know, and for years and years and years, people have gotten away with just putting a website out there. I downloaded WordPress, threw up a, you know, bought a template, put up, put a logo on there, and there it is. It's good to go. It's not good to go. That's not what it takes anymore. Yeah, you can do that, but if you really want to stand out, if you really want to dominate, you have to go from ordinary to extraordinary. And it's not even about a website anymore. It's about the full web presence. That's what you have to do. Web marketing now, SEO, SEO is just a very small component of what we do. It's about building the entire web presence. That's social media, that's conversions, that's um, every interaction that you have online, that's when somebody emails your business, uh, when somebody calls you on the phone, all of this goes to building up your online and your web presence. And that's what it needs to be. It needs to be extraordinary, all of it. All right, so how do we be extraordinary? That's what we all want to know. I mean, if that's what it takes to get number one on Google, what do we got to do to be extraordinary? Well, back in 98, this is how we got rankings. I don't know if you can see this. The keywords and links, that was it. How many of you remember those days? Anybody here? <laughs> that was it, man. You put some uh, meta tags in there, get some links, and you were golden. Of course, it's not like that anymore, is it? Now we have a lot of other things. So, you know, this was easy back in 98. That's all we had to do. But today we're looking at a little bit of a different picture. Well, keywords and links, those still matter. A little less so than they used to. You know, you hear people talking about keywords don't matter anymore. It's topics and that. We don't have to really do the keyword research, which I don't buy into that. I think keywords still do matter. Links are becoming less important, not obsolete. Um, Google has tried to do a version of the algorithm that didn't rely on links. It didn't work. They never rolled it out. It wasn't good enough. But what we find now is that website architecture matters. That pretty much is SEO now. Today, it's, it's fixing the website, fixing the architecture making sure the search engines can spider the site, making sure that they get the content, making sure you've got all the broken links fixed, making sure basically the site runs smooth and fast. That's the website architecture. And now we've got social media. You know, maybe not a direct, um, what's the word I'm looking for, causation on social media. You know, one, a plus one doesn't necessarily turn into a better ranking, but there's a lot of co correlation between what works well on social is also doing good on Google. That's because, like I said, Google's looking for the winners. So if you're winning in social media, then Google's going to reward you for that. 
you're going to see some benefit of that in Google. Uniqueness and value, usability and conversions, these are all things that are starting to play a bigger and bigger role in dominating search engines, pretty much. So that's what we need to do. We need to start looking at not the algorithms of yesterday and not even necessarily the algorithms of today. We just need to look at what is it that Google wants. They don't want us manipulating algorithms. I mean, as fun as that is to do all the research and, you know, oh, I need to put the word in there 72 more times on the page, you know. Instead of doing all that, Google's just saying, hey, you know what, let's build a great website. Let's build a web presence that really excites people and makes, makes it work. So building extraordinary does not mean finding loopholes in the search engine algorithms. That day is gone. We don't do that anymore. It's not about the loopholes. It's about just giving Google what they're looking for. It's about just being what people want. You know, the best way to manipulate somebody is just to give them what they want, and they'll be happy. Not that I'm advocating manipulation. You know, manipulation's bad. Um, but, you know, that's, that's kind of what we do in SEO. We're manipulating our websites so they perform better. Well, the best way to do that is just give people what they want. It's not looking for the loopholes. It's not looking for the, the way around. It's not looking for the dodge. It's looking for how do we do it right. Build an extraordinary website, it basically means creating a web presence that people love. That's what we need to do. That's really what it comes down to, is everything that you do online is about doing something that somebody is going to really, really love. And that's not the boss, that's the people you're trying to reach. Now, what the boss loves is usually, or oftentimes, not the same as what people love. So we have to, we have to learn to separate those two. You know, and, and too many times we build websites for the people above us rather than for the people that the website is intended to serve. And we gotta make sure that we're building it for our audience. They need to love what we're doing. They need to love the web presence. And you just got to deliver something that people can't get anywhere else. That's what you got to do. What is it that you offer? Whether it's a product, whether it's a service, whether it's an experience, what is it that you can do, what, that you can offer that people can't get anywhere else? You know, and that might be a tangible thing, and that might be an intangible thing, or a combination of both. Give them something where they walk away and say, man, I've done business with X number of other people and nobody's done it like them. Nobody's done it as good as them. That's what you want to be. You want to be that person. All right, so let's talk about how do we be unique? How do we build this unique web presence? Don't try to be all things to all people. Pontiac was a car company known, what was it, for their muscle cars, right? Trans Ams, Fieros, GTO, they're sports cars. This was Pontiac's brand for a long time. And then, you know, they're doing these cool cars. Any one of these I wouldn't mind, wouldn't mind owning. But then they go, you know what? We're doing so well with these cars. Let's, let's go big. Let's, get, let's go bigger. Let's expand our base. Let's do something a little bit more. So they started making sedans and minivans and that kind of crap, which are great cars for some people. But that's not the Pontiac brand. So where's Pontiac today? They're gone. So they had this awesome brand. They had this awesome niche. And they said, we want more. We want a bigger audience. We want to reach more people. And it killed them because they moved outside of what their unique zone. They moved outside of what made them special and made them awesome. And it turned them into just any other kind of car company. And that's not what people wanted. How many of you have ever seen Shark Tank? Love that show. So what do they do? They find a problem, they solve it. People come on the show and they're, they're pitching ideas because they're like, look, here's a problem. Here's something that we, need, that we can fix. Has anybody ever bought something that they saw off Shark Tank? A couple of you? I have. What did you buy? Fiber fix? I remember that. What, you, Scrub Daddy, that's the sponge, right? These are their best-selling products. The best-selling products on Shark Tank. Yeah, the sponge, the city kitty. Glass holder. Yep. Glass holder. Do you buy one of those? Uh 
Oh, jeez. Well, they work. Best-selling product is guitar, guitar that folds. I mean, you know, guitar is carrying those things around. That's unwieldy. Yeah, put that thing on your back. That's awesome. So you know, people said, hey, you know what? There's a problem here. We've got a solution. They created products, and they're selling like mad. You know, these are great products that, um, you know, people owe their success to being on Shark Tank. I mean, people, people that don't even get deals on Shark Tank go on to be successful, just the exposure that the show gives you. So, I mean, it, it's incredible. Um, find a one and deliver it. I had no idea I wanted a waffle taco <laughs> until Taco Bell put, came out with this thing. And that is a badass breakfast. I just got to say, that is some good stuff. Who, has anybody had one of those? Okay, one person. <laughs> Did you like it? It's awesome. <laughs> this is good stuff. So, you know, find, find something that people want, even if they don't know they want it. Find what people want and give it to them. That's how you, that's how you become extraordinary, you know. Um, find a void and fill it. Prego and ragu, the two top spaghetti sauces. Ragu, for years and years and years and years, was number one. They dominated the market. They had it down. And Prego was like, what do we have to do? What do we have to do to take some market share away from them? So they did a commission, a study, and they just wanted to find out what do people want in spaghetti sauces. And they found three things. A third of the audience wanted regular, a third wanted spicy, and a third wanted chunky. Now, at that time, there was no such thing as spicy, or there's no such thing as chunky spaghetti sauce. So Prego, in all their wisdom after doing the study, came out with a chunky spaghetti sauce. You may want to guess what happened? They are number one. They now dominated the market simply because there was a void. They found out what that void was, and they filled it. And they took the market share away from Ragu. That's amazing. You know, and it's just amazing that what we can do where we do something and we think this is all there is to what we do. That's not. Sometimes there's another way. That doesn't make it necessarily a better way. It just might be an alternative way that a different group of people like. A different way that maybe somebody prefers over the other way that you've been doing or that everybody else is doing. So look for those opportunities to be unique, to be special. All right, so let's talk about voice a little bit. That's the next thing. You know, when we're talking about how do we become extraordinary, we all need to have a voice. We need to just kind of, you know, use the words. How do we speak to our audience? How do we communicate with them? How do we, how do we engage with them? Um, you know, and everybody, every website, whether you know it or not, it, it's got a particular voice. And some websites we go to because we like the voice. You know, we like, oh, that's a snarky website. You know, that's where I get my news, or that's where I get my humor, or that's where I get this. Um, but that's not reserved for necessarily humor sites. Even business websites can use different voices for different things. So there's eight voices here. This is just an example of eight. But you can be humorous, whimsical, serious, snarky, down to earth, thoughtful, Brutally honest, flowery. These are all voices that you can use in your website content. And I'll prove it to you. We've got a bit of content here. And I'll, I'll go through these. But what we did is we took just a couple sentences from uh, not an existing website, um, but for a site that maybe sells car batteries. And we said, what can we do? Can we take this content here and put it in to each of these voices? And will it work? Will it work? Will it make sense? Is it something that you can legitimately put on a website without offending people or turning them away? So we start with, we offer a wide selection of long-lasting batteries designed to deliver enough power to start any vehicle in any weather condition. We sell durable batteries you can trust. All right, so that's decent content, right? That'll work. Nothing special about it necessarily, but let's see if we can uh, put this into a humorous tone. Our car batteries are durable, long-lasting, and deliver enough power to start any vehicle in the harshest winter environment. Your escape from the in-laws is guaranteed every season of the year. All right, got some chuckles, so it passes the humorous test. Is that something that could go on a website without, you know, turning people off? Probably could. So a lot of people would relate to that. 
All right, let's move on to the next one. Whimsical. You want a durable, long-lasting battery? Yeah, we got that. There's no natural force in the world that'll keep our batteries from doing their job. When you need power, we deliver. Nothing wrong with that. It's good. It's a little bit whimsical and, you know, nothing too far out there. So you can see where we can use these voices to basically do the same thing, just in a different way. You know, you get serious. Our car batteries are durable, long-lasting, deliver enough power to start any vehicle in the harshest winter environment. You're guaranteed to get power to your vehicle when you need it most. That's all right. For those of you who have those serious sites, you know, but we're taking content and we're changing it into our voice. Snarky. How many of you have snarky websites? Okay, we got a couple. All right. When headed to the in-laws, you want to be equipped with one of the most powerful car batteries money can buy. Come hell or high water, you're getting out of there alive. <laughs> Who can relate? <laughs> Down to earth, we don't compete on price, we compete on quality. Our batteries deliver the juice to start any vehicle, even in the harshest winter environment. Can you really put a price on that kind of reliability? That's down to earth. Give you the facts. Thoughtful. Let's face it, batteries fail at the worst possible time in the worst possible place. We've built reliability into our car batteries so they deliver the power you need when you need it most to get where you want to be. Very thoughtful. Very meaningful. Did that touch you? Touch me. <laughs> Brutally honest. Your boss is a jerk, your wife a nag, and your friends are idiots. You need an escape. Where you go is up to you. How you get there is up to us. Our car batteries will start any vehicle, anytime, anywhere. We're ready to go when you are. Honest. How many of you relate to that? Oh, come on. Put your hands down. That's that's true. That is true. Flowery. Our car batteries are designed to withstand whatever forces of nature the heaven above or you know who below can throw at it. When you turn that key, your vehicle will roar, will roar to life without so much as a cough or a sputter. So we just took content and put it into eight different voices. I mean, it, it works. Now, it may not work for your audience, nor not all of them will work for your audience, but some of them will, right? I'm sure you can find something there that will just kind of give your site a little bit something special, a little bit something unique. We've done something where being in marketing, we don't really want people to think that we're taking their thousands of marketing dollars and just being goofy with it. So we kind of take the serious approach to our content, but we've added an alter ego that's at the bottom of all our pages. We call him Max Speed. And uh, he gets a quote at the bottom of the pages. Every page is different. So he just says something a little bit sarcastic, a little bit snarky, a little bit fun. So it's our way of just kind of throwing in there, this is our personality, this is who we are, without kind of taking it over the top and scaring people away, because we really do want them to give us their money. Um, we want them to know that we can treat their money seriously. Um, but, you know, this is an, this is an avenue. This is a, a way you can do both. You can have your serious website, but, you know, do something a little bit fun. Um, you know, maybe it's an alter ego, maybe it's just a little call out box or something. You know, there's some, there's some creative ways you can do that. So that's your voice. You know, figure out what your voice should be. But by all means, find something that resonates with your audience. And every audience is going to be a little bit different, but don't be a stick in the mud. You know, don't just do what you've been doing because that's what you've been doing and that's what everybody expects. Do something different, do something that stands out. Don't piss people off. But, you know, give them some content that they can, they can kind of get an understanding of who you are. And that's a great thing about voice. It's really a way for people to get to know us. You know, it's a, it's a way for them to start feeling like they know who you are. Whether they've, they've met you or they've interacted with you or not, that voice, if it's something unique and different, they, they start to feel like, okay, I know who these people are. I get it. All right, let's move on. Uh, create a compelling experience. That's what we want. We want people to come on the website, and we want them to have an awesome experience, right? We want them to go, yes, this is awesome. This is great. I have achieved my goals. We do not want this. We do not want them yelling at the computer screen because they hate our website, right? How many of you have been that way? You've yelled at the website because you can't figure out 
how to get it right. I've been there, you know. If your website sucks and my wife's on it a certain week of the month, this is her every time. <laughs> so your website can't suck, you know. You just don't want to aggravate people. And who knows, somebody might have had a bad day and they get on your website and you just, they don't want to do business with you because your website sucks. They just can't find what they want. So you want people to have a good experience. You want them to enjoy the site. Intuitive navigation. Make sure people can find what they're looking for. You know, I, I don't know, I've been to so many websites and you land on a page and you're like, I, I can't figure out what you do. You know? Can't figure out what, what, what are you? What do you do? What do you offer? You need to make sure that your navigation spells it out. Uh, one of the ways that we've done that, and this is something I advise all my clients to do, right there, you put all your services or products or, you know, maybe not every product, but your main categories of products or services. That's what people want to see. They land on your homepage, they immediately know what we do. They don't have to read anything necessarily. They don't have to read content. They don't have to go click a button that says services. They don't have to click anything that says here we see our products. They know without doing anything that they've landed on the right site that gives them what they want. And that's what you want is have the navigation that is very clear and it directs people as quickly as possible to what they need. Now, don't go overboard and have one of those navigations that, hey, we've got you know, 1,500 pages in, it's all right there in the navigation, you know? It's like the entire site right there in your navigation. That's not what you want. That's deer in the headlights. People don't know what to do with that, you know? Narrow down your options, give them a few things to choose from, and then let them start getting down, diving down into what they want. So you want to have a balance between having, you know, hardly any options to having too many options. Have enough so people can figure out what they need, where they click on next. Make it easy. Easy to achieve goals. What's the goal? Why are people on your site? What, are you trying, what do they need to do? Well, some people, they want to learn about you. Some people want to know what your expertise level is. Some of them want to figure out if your products that you offer are the right products. Whatever those goals are, make it easy. You know, don't just rely on navigation to help people click, click, click to get to what they want. Use content to give people the information they need and then the links in the content to get them to those goals. I mean, really, we don't want people just to come and leave, right? We want people to come and, and do something. So make sure your website helps them do that something. Make sure they're able to find the information, find the links, find the content that brings them to their goals. Clear path to conversions. Conversion is different for everybody, right? Some people want a phone call. Some people want a form filled out. Some people want, you know, check out, buy my products. Different goals for different people, but each of those conversions matters. Now, I don't know how many sites I've been on where there was no call to action. Had no idea, okay, there's your product, now what do I do? You know? What do you do? You got to let people know. I, I had this client years ago, and uh, he refused to put calls to action on his website. He says, my, my users are too sophisticated for that. Like, are you serious? You know, people need to be told what to do. I mean, it, you don't have to treat them like they're idiots, but if people don't get that call to action, then they're not going to take action. You know, that's why you see commercials where they flash the phone number on there 50 times and you hear them repeat it three times in a row because they're giving you that call to action. It's like, here's what you are to do next. So go do that. You know, people can ignore the call to action if they don't want it. But if it's not there, then you're not going to get anybody taking an action. You know, and a lot of times we see that on sites, well, we don't sell products online, we just let people see them. Well, but people want to know what, what to do. Do they need to call you to get a special order made? Or, you know, what is it? What is it that you need people to do? And make sure that's obvious on the website. Have those uh, path to conversions. Don't make visitors hunt for information, whatever it is, you know, about us information, contact information. Um, product information, 
don't make people have to play hide and seek. You know, you're not trying to hide stuff from people. You want to make it easy for them to find. And you know, just make sure that your website makes sense. You know, that there's a logical progression from when people land on a page, whether it's the home page or an uh, internal page from the search engines. Make sure that there's a logical progression from where they are to what information that they need. Now, of course, we don't always know what information they need at any given time, but we can kind of do some research and go, what, what, what information are people looking for? You know, look at your analytics and figure out what information people most want, and then start reworking your site so they find it, right? And give people what they want. Find ways to delight your visitors. Now, this is both online and offline. You can delight your visitors by doing things like hassle-free returns, um, great customer support. I don't know how many you know, companies that I have not done business with because I didn't like their customer service. You, know, you, you go, hey, they got a great website, I'm going to call them up, and the phone rings and rings and nobody picks up. You know? Or you send them an email and nobody gets back to you. Um, you know, and that's actually on my next slide, but you know, things like just offering free shipping. You know, think about what it is, what it is, what is it that your visitors would love to see you offer? Can you offer it? I mean, other than free, you know, which not everybody can do free, but you can in, in many cases, but you know, what is it that you would absolutely delight your audience? Is it free shipping? Is it discounts? Is it coupons? Is it you know, having people available that they can call and, and get help. You know, there's a lot of easy ways to do that kind of stuff. Make your customers happy. Build trust. Calls, emails, that's trust building. I uh, went to a networking event oh, three or four months ago. It was a speed networking event. And uh, met this guy who was a handyman. And, you know, obviously I'm thinking you're at this networking event because you want business. I got his card. I called him up, left a message, nothing. Never got back to me. I'm thinking, okay, I mean, now I got two choices. I can either call him again or shoot him an email and say, hey, did you get my message? Or just realize that's probably how this guy works and I don't want somebody working for me that isn't going to follow up. You know, that's the worst, having working with people that just kind of disappear. Uh, that's that happens. Does that happen to anybody? It happens to me working with web developers. <laughs> Subcontract web developers, they're gone. You know, they, they start something and they don't finish it sometimes. You don't want that kind of stuff. You want, you know, you want to build trust. You want to make sure that people come to your website and you're exceeding their expectations. You're putting them first. Build that trust because that is one of the most important things that you can do for your visitors is to build trust. People will only do business with people that they trust. And there's all kinds of different trust symbols. Um, I think I've got a whole chapter of that uh, dedicated to that in my book. <laughs> so, you know, you can do, you, you, you just want to make sure that people can trust you. People are comfortable doing business with you. All right, publish valuable content. Who here is a publisher? Every one of you should raise your hand. Everybody here is a publisher. If you have a website, you are a publisher. That's part of our job. I don't care if you sell products, widgets, services, whatever. You are a publisher. You need to be a publisher. You need to act like a publisher. Because that's what people are looking for. It's, it's information. Before they'll do business with anybody, they need information from them first. So what kind of information do we publish? Well, expert knowledge. Does everybody here have a blog? Does, no, does somebody here not have a blog? Yeah, I'd be embarrassed to raise my hand too. <laughs> Seriously, you got to have a blog. That's the starting point. You know, have, have a place to put your expert knowledge that people can read. People want to know they're doing business with knowledgeable people. They want to know they're doing business with people who know what they're talking about. So you put that out. And, you know, people ask me all the time, it's like, why do you put all of your information out there on your blog for free? 
You know, isn't that what you sell? And well, technically, yes. I mean, we sell services, we sell our knowledge, but people come to us for our knowledge because they read what we write and go, wow, these guys know their stuff, and then they soon realize, holy crap, that's a lot of work. You know? So they come to us because they know we know how to do it. Because I've been publishing stuff out there since, you know, Google was born. So what else? Strategic advice. You know, um, how many of you participate in uh, social networks and answer questions? Yeah, a lot of you. I do that on LinkedIn. People ask questions, I'll go out, I'll answer them. You know, technically, again, it's giving away free stuff. But, you know, if it's an easy answer, it just comes from knowledge, a few minutes of time. But then they might come back and say, hey, you helped me with this. Now I've got this bigger question, this bigger problem. I need somebody who knows what they're talking about. You help me over here. We got a client that way. He asked me a question one day, local guy, and I said, well, I don't know the answer, but let me have my social media person call you. And she answered his question, and a couple weeks later he says, you know what, you gave me free advice, I'm going to give you my business. So that's great, you know, you're giving that strategic advice. Product information and specs. Really? I mean, that's boring, right? Everybody has product information, everybody has specifications, but it shouldn't be boring. I mean, why? If you're just regurgitating boring product information and specs, you're doing it all wrong. Make it exciting, make it fun, make it interesting. Don't just take a catalog dump and put it on your website that's on 20,000 other websites, you know. Take that information and turn it into something unique that's just yours and yours alone. That's what Google likes, you know, and that's what visitors like. Anybody can go and get product information that's the same everywhere else. We'll give them something that's a little bit different. Tell us something a little bit more about it. Give them something different. Make sure your information is interesting. Product comparisons, we all like product comparisons, right? You can compare your own products against each other, your own services against each other to help people decide, you know, which one's right for them. Or you compare yours against a competitor's. You know, there's, people are always looking for information like that, you know. And the more information you give people to help them make an informed decision, you know, why make them go to your website and your competitor's website and sit here and compare it when they can just go to your website? They get the comparison, yeah, they're already there, looks good, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna engage, we're gonna buy, we're gonna pick up the phone and call. Offer information that people like. Customer reviews, <clears throat> my wife does not buy anything anymore that doesn't have customer reviews. So if your website doesn't do reviews, you will not hear, get her business any time of the month, period. <laughs> you won't get it. A lot of people are like that. They need the reviews, they wanna see the reviews. And you know what? Don't be afraid to publish negative reviews. It, it adds authenticity. You know, if you're only, if you're only publishing the, the five-star reviews, you know, it starts to look a little fishy sometimes. You know, especially when you got like, you know, 4,000 of them and nothing else, nothing negative. Nothing, nobody ever said anything bad about this. Eh, it's, usually it's not gonna happen. But you know, put, put the reviews out there. Let people see them. Let people see what you offer. You know, and, you know, reviews aren't for everybody necessarily, but if, it, you know, if it's something that other people are doing in your industry for what you offer, then you need to do it. Don't let other people be the ones doing that. You need to be the ones doing that because that's what people are gonna need. Otherwise, they'll go to the other websites, read those reviews, and well, like I so said, they're, they're there. They might as well just complete the purchase. That's the trust they needed. Tips and tutorials, you know, going back to your blog, write, write blog posts with tips, help people, how-tos, all kinds of different things, you know. You can do this on social media, quick tips every now and then. Um, you know, tips that lead back to blog posts, tips that lead back to your website, all kinds of stuff. There's all kinds of ways to write good information. Company background and mission, this is another one. Oh, that's boring, right? Well, it doesn't have to be. Your company information and mission statements don't have to be boring. Let people know who you are. Let them know about you. Help, have them learn something unique and new and, and maybe even fun about you. This is how people get to know you. And if they can read your company background and your mission and feel like maybe there's a connection there, well, how do you make a connection, people? It's not by just spouting corporate mumbo-jumbo. 
you do it by being a little personal. So get a little personal in these things, you know? There's nothing wrong with that. Don't hide behind the corporate veil, you know? Do something unique. Do something fun with this information. How-to videos. YouTube's, what, the second most used search engine? A lot of people are searching how to do whatever. Well, that could be your video that they find. You know, that could be your video that they're, they're watching and they're learning from, and they use that. That goes into, you know, maybe not a direct sale, maybe not a direct customer, but it goes into authority, goes into credibility. And again, those are all signals that the search engines are looking for. They like that kind of stuff. So why do extraordinary websites win? Why? I mean, that's what we're doing, right? We're talking about, let's build an extraordinary website. Why do they win? Well, because it gives, gives Google what it's looking for. Google's looking for extraordinary. Google's looking for something that stands out that people really like. And it earns top search engine rankings, which that's what we all want, right? You know, I tell people, don't try to get rankings, earn them. Earn them by being incredible. Earn them by being spectacular. But what's even better than those things, more importantly, the things that you really want is targeted traffic. We want business. We want people coming to our website that are meant for our website. We want to be the source that people are looking for, and we're the destination that they're coming to. We want conversions, right? We want people to come, fill out the form, pick up the call, purchase the products. Building extraordinary websites improves the conversion rates, and it builds on your ROI. It's all about the ROI, right? If you can take, you know, you're getting 50 cents per visitor and turn that into a dollar per visitor, well, that's a win, right? Because you don't have to go out and get 100 more visitors to make more money. You just doubled the amount that you get per visitor. And now, once you've done that, then you go out and get more, and you're making exponentially more ROI. So, you know, that's a win. Uh, gains word of mouth. Word of mouth, what's that? Free advertising, right? We love that. I mean, how many of us pay good money for advertising and marketing when word of mouth, if you do it right, that's doing your marketing for you? That's good stuff. Customer loyalty. We all like that. We want repeat customers. Costs more money to get a new customer than to keep a customer, right? So we want loyal customers. We want repeat customers. We want people coming back again and again and again because we gave them an experience that's just awesome. We gave them a great experience. So if this is how we get rankings today, site architecture, social media, uniqueness and value, all to varying degrees, this is what we need to focus on, which is the algorithms of tomorrow. All of these things are going to matter. So it's not about, oh, how do I SEO, me, SEO my site to get those top search engine rankings? It's how do I build a site that hits on all of these levels, completely and totally and expertly? That's what we want, because when you do this, then you've got a site that outsmarts, outperforms, and outlasts Google. That's it. We got time for questions? Definitely. Got to hand out books. Whitney, if you're listening, uh, who won? I don't know if she can hear me. Hmm. Well, you, you got something to give away. You want to do a? Yeah. Yeah. First, okay, that's good. Or do attendees? Wait, do you have to make sure it was a good question first, or you just?
it was not okay. You said it to not work on the algorithm, but it's kind of hard not to. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, we've gotten so focused on web marketing tactics, and really it's not about the tactics, it's about the quality of what we do. And if we look at it, you know, we're, what was it, a few months ago, six months ago or so, where Google said, hey, guest blogging is dead. It's done. Because people were using it as a tactic. But is guest blogging really dead? No, it's not. It's still valuable if you're doing it right. And so we have to make sure what we're doing is not as a tactic, but we're doing it because this adds value to my website, this adds value for my audience, this is giving people more of what they want. Um, if your site keeps going down every time they do an algorithm update, I mean it means that there's something in your history that Google is going, okay, we're not going to count these anymore, we're not going to give value to those things anymore. The way you combat that is doing more of the good stuff. Focus on what's good and build that up. And, you know, that's, that's all you can do, really. I mean, there's, there's a bunch of tools you can run through and that'll point out a lot of errors of your site. I use three in particular. One is Google Webmaster Tools. That'll give you a lot of things. Uh, Xenu for broken links and redirected links. Xenu Link Sleuth, that's X-E-N-U. Um, then that's, that's a real quick program. But another one that I really like is Microsoft IIS. It's actually built into Windows. You get a SEO plugin for that. And that'll give you a whole bunch of information uh, once you run a site through that that I mean you'll find 10,000 errors you know depending on the site but you know I rerun it every, uh, Microsoft IIS, Xenu, Link Sleuth and uh, Google Webmaster Tools. No. No, I mean, it's just, uh, I mean, I don't use Mac, so I don't know if you can do it from a Mac, but it's built into Windows. You just put in the URL of any site, and it'll give you your report. Thank you, Tim. Uh, I just have a question. You mentioned something about uh, delighting your customer, which is a good idea. Can you give us an example of how you can delight your that is beneficial that can have a value. How to delight your customer? Yeah. Well, I mean, we had some up on the slides. Every industry is different. Um, I think you just got to figure out what is it that people want, you know? Put yourself into Shark Tank mode. <laughs> you know, it's like, what can I do that's just incredible that people are going to love that nobody else is doing? You know, you basically, you've got to invent something, some type of concept or idea in your head and go, Nobody's doing that. Okay, let's do that. Or let's do it better than somebody else. You know? And half the innovation in the world is not doing anything new, it's doing something better than the other guy. I mean, that's Google. They didn't invent the search engine, they just did it better than everybody else. So that's what you gotta do is think about how, ways you can improve your processes, your offerings, your solutions, all of that. We've never had a client lose rankings because of an algorithm change uh, since Florida. <laughs> yeah, I mean, literally, it's just because it, it really—it's all about going. What do the search engines want? Not what works today. What is it that they really want? And if you're doing that, you're staying ahead of it. And you know, we tell clients, "Sorry, we're not going to do these things because it will come back to bite you." And sure enough, you know, you saw the penguin and panda, and a lot of people got hurt, and none of our clients did. Thanks. All right, I have a question. Uh, what about uh, mobile response?
responsive? You kind of didn't talk too much about that. And how that impact? Yeah, um, yeah, I mean, I think we all, if your website isn't <clears throat> responsive, if it's not mobile friendly, um, it needs to be because more and more people are using mobile devices to get what they need, you know, to, to get information. And it, mobile is only part of the experience. You know, they'll, they'll find things on mobile and then they'll move to a desktop to maybe complete their purchase or whatever else. I'm one of those. I use the mobile for looking at information, but I don't really like doing tasks. So I'll take that information and I'll take it back to my desktop and then I'll complete what I'm doing over there. Um, so mobile is important, and um, I mean I think I have a whole chapter dedicated to that in my book. Video, I encouraged. I mean, if you've got the opportunity and can do that to stand out, you know, we did talk about doing how-to videos, um, and that's not the only kind of videos you you can do, but that's one example. It's definitely something. I mean, all multimedia is something that you should look at varying up your content into different avenues, different ways. Okay, I'm understanding. <laughs> um, my question is, I recently read an article, I, I saw, that's why I saw it on some news channel, that young, the younger generation, so like 17, 18 year olds, they're becoming more private about things, and so the thought with that is they're not really chasing after so much of these social channels, and there's so many social channels to keep up with as it is, and you can't I, it depends on your industry. I think you've got to figure out what where your audience is. Um, we have a flow meter client. Um, Pinterest is not the place for them. You know, nobody's looking at flow meter pictures. Um, so we know that that's an area we don't need to venture into. Um, Facebook may or may not be the best place for them, but there are av other avenues, you know, and you just got to maybe even test some of the different channels, um, find out what works, do some research, figure out where your audience is and what they're doing and all of that. So it's, there's really no easy answer to that. You just got to figure out, and, and you don't need to focus on all of them. Focus on the ones that are going to give you the best ROI. I know there's no such thing as a panacea, but in WordPress, are there any plugins that you recommend for search engine optimization and you know, being able to at least get started with uh, trying to keep your site from getting hurt or hurt yourself? Or? Yeah. Um, well, you mean like WordPress plugins or? Yeah. Uh, we use a few. Uh, I mean, Yoast is a great plugin for optimizing pages and things like that. Um, that's probably the biggest one that I would recommend, but uh, I don't know that there's any that we would say this is the end all be all of any plugin or whatever. I think you just got to research, figure out what you need, and you know, go with that. Okay, I agree that creating a better user experience is the way to go. But if I'm working with clients who've been learning how to game the system, how to beat the algorithm, and they've gotten addicted to it, how can I move them over, especially if these techniques take a while to catch on? In other words, it takes them a while to see the results. Well, you can always threaten to fire them. <laughs> <laughs> right, and, no, and, and we, we, have, we have the same problem. I mean, we've got a client that uh, probably going on eight, 10 years now. And they hired us back when it was SEO. And now, you know, we're looking at entire web presence and we're saying, hey, you need to do this on social. You need to do this. And, and they say, okay, thanks, but we hired you to do SEO. We'll handle that stuff. And you're like, okay, but this is important for what we do. You want rankings, so you got to do these things. And no, we've given you in charge of everything you need for rankings. We'll handle the social media. We'll handle, and they don't get it. You know, and it's like, it takes everything. If you're only going to focus on this, then, you know, our hands are tied. And I had to tell them, our hands are being tied because you won't give us opportunity to do these things. You know, we're not saying, look, we're not saying give us more money so we can do it for you. We're just saying you need to do some of these things. 
and they've been very resistant to it. Um, but my guess while they're, why they're still with us is because they found that nobody else can do what we're doing, <laughs> um, or very few people. So you know they're they're sticking with it, and they're they're starting to come around and say thanks for those ideas. Yeah, we're going to implement some of that, um, and we're just hoping that eventually we'll be able to do more. Did you get the tweet for the tweet? Uh, let's see. Okay. Okay, that's enough. Uh, first two, Greg Gifford. All right, um, and I think this is uh, an autocorrect, a map basically. $15, right? Yep, $15. And if you got a free book, though, you are obligated to review it on Amazon and tweet about it. I'm there we go. Oh, okay, a couple of housekeeping things. Come on up, please, real quick. Uh, we have another giveaway for Rob Gardner's book. Uh, so we've collected some business cards. I need some more, though. We'll do it quick. If you want it, don't. Well, we just got uh, a couple of other things. Uh, David Wolf is a video of this. Uh, we've got permission from Stoney. We're going to put it on the back end secure. Back in, so you guys can log in or share or tell other.